Where's Japan's economy headed? Naturally, that's always a tough call to make, but it's an especially tricky call right now as Japan's economy confronts some major challenges and experiences some big changes. After decades in the doldrums, the Japanese economy seems to be staging a recovery. Abenomics, the policies named after Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, are generally credited for the improvement, but lately the recovery seems to have faltered. Growth projections for 2014 have been cut, while the trade deficit continues to expand. Some other key stats are pointing south, making the recovery seem quite a bit more fragile than before. At this critical juncture, with insufficient domestic demand, it would seem that the last thing the Japanese economy needs is a sweeping tax hike. But that's exactly what happened. The rise in the consumption tax is hitting consumers' purchasing power, and it's slated to rise in the future. Uh, Japan needs a better and more efficient tax system. Previous prime ministers have uh, always postponed this. Um, now is the time to do it um, because the banking system is very strong. The labor market uh, is actually very strong as well. So, you know, there may be some wobbles in terms of the monthly data, but overall the key issue is that Japan is doing the right thing. Japan is building a better and more efficient tax system to ensure a brighter future. A major argument is that Japan, while trying to stimulate private domestic demand, still needs to tackle its massive fiscal debt. It also needs to do a better job of funding its social security system, which faces a squeeze due to the country's rapidly graying population. Well, the problem is for Japan itself and for the Japanese. Um, you know, how are you going to pay for this? It, it, it's not going to get paid back. People Through are, higher GDP growth. Well, th that's going to uh, attack some of the mountain. Inflation will, will attack some of that as well. Um, the expectation is that GDP growth will, you know, uh, uh, get things back into balance. Um, but Japan is a mature economy with a shrinking population. To squeeze more and more out of a, a you know, a shrinking population is a tall order, particularly in a mature economy. So ultimately, who's going to be paying for this? It's going to be J Japanese society. Um, but you know, consumption tax uh, has to go up in the long run. The, the challenge is making it politically feasible. Uh, the trouble is if it's hostage to uh, every sort of political twist and turn, um, then you know, there's a lack of clarity going on. So the tax is meant to rise again to 10, 10%. If you've got a sense of deja vu about this, you'd be right. The last time Japan hiked the consumption tax was in 1997, with some of the same issues in the backdrop. But the result then was a disaster. The economy quickly went from having healthy levels of growth to a recession, which spawned the deflation. But according to Cole and others, this time it's different. The economy, they say, is now a lot more resilient than in 1997. The labor market in Japan is now recovering. It is not where we've been over the last 20 years. The unemployment rate has fallen. Job offers to applicants now show that there is more demand for labor than there is supply. And you do find that in the belly of the Japanese economy, for the first time in one generation, wages are actually increasing, employment is growing. So the loss of the purchasing power right, is not going to be a big blow to the economy, in my opinion. Consumers have indeed cut back their spending after the tax was raised. Retail sales for April were off 4.4% from a year earlier. The question is whether there are any bright signs on the horizon and whether Japan's economy will continue in a sustained way to overcome its many years of deflation and stagflation. Thank you for watching BIJ TV.